This is a story from one of the main character in Norse mythology, the god of thunder, the god of lightning, Thor. Thor is one of the most prominent figures in Norse mythology. Thor, the brownie thunder god, is the archetype of a loyal and honorable warrior, the ideal toward which the average human warrior aspires. He is the indefatigable defender of the Aesir gods and their fortress, from the enrichment of the giants, who are usually the enemies of the gods. No one is better suited for this task than Thor. His courage and sense of beauty are unshakable, and his physical strength is virtually unmatched. He even owns an unnamed belt of strength that makes his power doubly formidable when he wears that belt. His most famous possession, however, is his hammer, Mjolnir. Only rarely does he go anywhere without it. For the hidden Scandinavians, just as standard was the embodiment of Thor, light embodiment of his hammer slaying giant as he rode across the sky in his gold drawn carrier. Thor's particular enemy is Jormungand, the animal sea serpent who encircles Midgard, the world of human civilization. In one myth, he tries to pull Jormungand out of the ocean while on a fishing trip, and is stopped only when his giant companion cuts the fishing light out of fear. Thor and Jormungand finally face each other during Ragnarok, however, when the two put an end to each other. Thor's hammer could be used to hello as readily as it could be used to destroy. And, in effect, these two properties were one and the same, since any fortification necessarily involves the banishing of hostile force or elements. The blessing of weddings, for example, was effect through his hammer. Perhaps the most striking case of this, however, is his ability to kill and eat the gods that drive his chariot, gather their bones together in their heights, bless the heights with the hammer and bring the animals back to life, as healthy and vital as before. So Thor kill it, eat it, and bring back him to life. Unir was the mightiest of all the giants, the springs of darkness, winter, night, and the grave, who are often the enemies of the gods. One day, Hrungnir was paid a visit in Jotunheim, the homeland of the giants. By Odin, Hrungnir didn't recognize the god at first, and instead wondered aloud who this stranger might be whose horse could ride through the air and water as he had seen the horse to do at the god's approach. Odin bet his head that his horse, none other than the eight late Samanic steed Slipnir, could outrun any horse in Jotunheim. Rungnir was insulted by this provocation and straight away accepted the bet and mounted his own horse, Gulfaxi, to the Asgard. The two raced through mud and streams, over steep rocky hills and between the trees and thick woodlands. Before the giant realized it, he had passed through the gates of Asgard. And of course, he still hadn't caught up with Odin and Slipnir. The gods seemingly in good cheer invited him to drink with them. After he had become drunk, he became belligerent and boasted that he would kill all the gods except for the Freya and Sif, the wife Thor. These two lovely goddesses would carry back to Jotun him with him. Freya alone was thought of heart enough to continue filling his horn. Next, he bellowed that he would drink every last drop of the god's ale. The god soon grew tired of his anger and sent for Thor, who had been elsewhere fighting for other giants. When Thor arrived and discovered the situation, he lit his hammer and prepared to slay Hrungnir there on the spot. The Belikos Giant accused Thor of cowardice for intending to kill someone who was himself unarmed. Your name will be held in the far higher honor. If you will accept my challenge to a duel, the giant declared, never want to lose an opportunity 
to gain renown and prove his abilities or accept it. When the arranged time had arrived, Rungnir walked to the field near Jotunheim, where the duel was to be held. He wore stone armor, brandished a stone shield, and menacingly waved a wet stone, his chosen weapon, and there above him. Suddenly, he saw lightning and heard thunder clap above him, and Thor rode onto the battlefield. Thor hurled his hammer at the giant, and the giant slung his whetstone at the gun. The stone burst against Thor's forehead and shattered into pieces, and this is the origin of all flint on earth. Thor's hammer also struck Hunir heads, but this time it was the giant heads that was shattered. But a piece of Hunir's whetstone was lodged in Thor's forehead. So Thor sought out the sorcerer Skrulla, who sang spells over the stone to remove it from the god's brow. When the Thor felt the stone moving, he told the sorceress many joyous things to encourage her, chiefly that the, he had controlled her lost husband, who would soon be home. But Groa was so overcome with emotion upon hearing this that she forgot her chance, and the rock remained lodged in Thor's face until his death at Ragnarok. The gods had arranged a lavish feast with Aegir and Ran, two gracious and hospitable giants who dwell beneath the sea. Aegir and Ran offered to host the banquet but only if the gods could provide them with a cattle big enough to brew meat for all the invited guests. The god knew that of all the beings in the nine worlds, only the giant Hymir possessed a cauldron large enough for this purpose. Thor, the brownest and the bravest of the gods, as well as the one of the most accustomed to dealing with the giants, not all of whom are as friendly to gods as are Aegir and Ran, volunteered to obtain this cauldron from Himir. Upon the gods' arrival at his house, Himir slaughtered three bulls for provision for the two during Thor's stay. And the giant was shocked and dismayed when Thor ate two of the bulls in one sitting to assert his legendary hanger. Because of this, the angry giant declared they would need to go fishing in the morning for the next day's food. In the morning, Himir sent Thor to procure bait for their hooks. Thor went to Himir's pastures and slaughtered the biggest of the giant's remaining bull. Intending to use the head as bait, Himir was no more irritated than ever at the rash youngster, but hoped his strength and daring would be of help on their fishing trip. The two got into the boat with Thor in the stern. The god rowed them out to Himir's usual fishing grounds, where the giant, to his delight, called two whales. But then, Thor began to row the boat further out from land. His companion grew fearful and demanded that they row back at Och, because he reminded Thor Hjormungard these wild waves. Thor, the age-old enemy of the monstrous sea serpent, refused. At last, Thor dropped the oars and cast his line into the water. After an ominous silence and calm, Thor felt a mighty tug on his life. As he reeled it in, a violent rumbling shook the boat and whipped the waves. The giant grew pale with terror, but Thor persisted. His feet were planted so firmly in the bottom of the boat that the planks gave way and water began pouring in. When the serpent's head with the hook in his venom dripping his mouth, at last came up above the water, Thor reached for his hammer. At this moment, Himir panicked and cut the line. The howling snake slung back down into the ocean. Thor, enraged at having missed the opportunity to end his greatest foe, heaved Himir overboard. And then Thor, with the two whales slung over his shoulder, waded back to land, picked up Himir's cauldron, and returned home to Asgard.